to Dorky DIY. Today I'm going to just share um, a couple things I've learned while using the We Are Memory Keepers mold press. Um, I had a couple issues with getting some really wrinkly molds and I think some other people have too online. Um, I did a video before that showed how I was putting pennies or dimes underneath and I really hate think that helped on the aeration of it, but I was still having a lot of problems uh, when I was molding small objects. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys um, some of the things that I've figured out today um, while using this machine and seeing if we could work out the bugs. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so before I get the machine turned on to warm up, I just wanted to show you all one thing real fast. I had to get a new shop vac, and the other one's hose fit perfectly in here, and this one is really big. So I was worried um, it wouldn't fit, and it doesn't, so I had to start using the adapter, but instead of putting it in this way because the adapter won't fit on like this. I figured out you can put the adapter on backwards like this. And then put the hose onto the adapter and that way you get a really good seal and I think pretty much any hose would work using this configuration. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn on the machine, get it warmed up and ready to go. Okay, so the machine's all warmed up. Um, I'm trying to get at a camera angle where you guys can see up under there. It's really dark under there so it's kind of hard to shoot. But I'm going to be molding this little tiny piece of candy. And we're going to make sure, first of all, that we put it in the very center of this bottom platform. And then second, we're just going to wait for this plastic to melt. We're not going to let it droop down like an inch, like it says in the uh, instruction manual. I just want it to get started to melt. And then I'm going to go ahead and mold it because with the smaller objects I've figured out you you don't need all that droop. I think that's what was causing all of the wrinkles. Um, as long as the plastic's melted uh, you're going to get a way better mold. And I've also figured out that um, Basically anything small you kind of want to do, or anything really that you're going to put in there, you want to do less than half of the height of it with the droop. So if you're doing something really small like this, I basically don't want it to droop at all. I just want it to get melted. And you can kind of see when it starts to melt because the plastic will look kind of wavy. And, uh, and then you want to go ahead and do it as fast as possible. So we're going to go ahead and... Now, if you can see that, we have a absolutely perfect mold. There is no wrinkles, no lines whatsoever. I'll go ahead and take it out so you guys can see it up close. Alright, do you see that? I know it's kind of hard to see because it's clear, but we have a really good mold of our object and there isn't a single wrinkle or a single line anywhere around it. So, you know, if you're putting small things in there, you basically don't want it to droop at all. You just want it to melt, especially in the center. I mean, that just took seconds for it to melt. So, um, and then anything else I've been putting in there, say I want to put this in there. 
I would only let it droop less than half of the height of whatever you're going to put in there. So if you're going to put this in there, I would I'd let it droop less than half of that height right there. And I've been getting some really good results like that. Just um, really taking care of the height or the 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 length of the droop you just really need to make sure that your plastics melted and like you see you know the plastic melts really fast so there we are perfect molds I still stand by putting pennies or dimes underneath it um, if you have a large object and um, that way you get some really good aeration but I was having a lot of problems molding really small things like this and I think I finally figured it out so I hope this helps somebody and uh, I hope uh, everybody else can be getting better molds out of it Perfect mold again. No wrinkles, no lines. <laughs> Alright, now that was probably a bad idea though because <laughs> I was uh, doing a gummy ear for some reason and <laughs> so don't do gummies. I thought I'd probably be able to because this is a piece of candy but it's like a hard piece of candy it's Harry Potter je jelly slugs from Jelly Belly but it has like a um, like a hard coating on the outside of it and this is just a squishy gummy but I'm sure if you wash the mold out afterwards it would probably be fine just uh, be aware of that it's kind of gross right now Okay, so I'm going to try to get a better uh, view of this plastic on top and see if you guys can see what I'm talking about. Before, in the in the description, it says to let it droop, like, down to here, and that's a lot. So, we're basically just letting it melt. Alright, as you can see, it's just slightly bubbled out, so... Okay, sorry, I know that was kind of a weird transition, but here we go. See, there's absolutely no wrinkles whatsoever, so I think we have figured it out, people. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I think we have finally figured out how to get really good molds without having all of those weird wrinkles. I've done this multiple times, had success. Um, you just kind of have to mentally think about how big the object is that you're trying to mold and how much extra plastic you're going to need to get the mold out of that object, if you understand what I'm saying. like. It is a very, um, you know, it's been a time-consuming process of trying to figure out um, the best ways to go about getting good molds. Um, I don't think you're going to pick this machine up and in the first day 
have perfect molds just flying out unless you're just, you know, unless it's luck. Um, I do think using the pennies and the dimes underneath it, especially with the larger objects and the post-it notes and stuff like that really helped. Um, but I also think it has a lot to do with how much you let your plastic droop down before you mold the object. So it's kind of hit and miss, you know, it's, it's, it's something that is going to take some practice. It's not just plug and play, um, especially if you need perfect molds, you know, like for the shaker cards or something like that. Um, but I, I do think it can be accomplished. And I do think this is a good machine. I like it for myself. Um, I paid for it myself, so it wasn't sent to me for free. All the opinions you're getting here are my own. Um, I do like it, and I think I'm going to end up using it more now that I've figured out how to get a really good mold each and every time so that I'm not wasting plastic. And I, I really hope this helps um, at least one person out there figure out whether or not they want to buy the machine first of all and then second of all maybe if they're having problems uh, to figure out how to correct the uh, the problems in their molds so um, I want to thank everybody if this did help you give me a thumbs up uh, leave a comment I go through and I read the comments and if you left me a comment in any of my other videos I'm sure I probably responded so I love the conversation there. So if you liked it, leave me a comment. I love it. Thank you so much. And to the 22 people that have subscribed, I really appreciate it. Um, because you're not one of the four family members I made subscribe. So thank you so much. And have a great day. Happy crafting. Bye.